Good evening and welcome to the knockout stages of this season's Conti Cup. We are into the last eight and that means both of these teams start the night just two wins away from a possible final. Both Brighton and Aston Villa had successful cup runs last season. Both made it through to the semis of the FA Cup. Only one of Brighton or Aston Villa will go both that far this season in the Conti Cup. Well, Brighton played against Manchester United on Sunday. And new coach Mikey Harris has resisted the temptation to make sweeping changes here. There is just the one change to the Brighton lineup as Lee Gun Min drops to the bench. And in comes Portuguese international Tatiana Pinto in her place. For Aston Villa, the big story is that Rachel Daly has been handed a retrospective three-game ban following the Bristol City match for an incident that wasn't picked up by the officials at the time. Ebony Salmon starting instead of Rachel Daly here. And crucially, there is no Noel Moritz. Well, there was plenty of controversy surrounding Aston Villa's progression to the knockout stages after Noel Moritz, of course, was selected in error in the group stages having already played for Arsenal in this competition so there may be a few Manchester United fans watching on here and supporting Brighton certainly wouldn't have been doing that at the weekend when Brighton were swept aside by Manchester United in the Barclays Women's Super League it was the first game in charge for Mikey Harris after Mel Phillips, with just nine months in the job, packed her bags and moved on. And poor Mikey Harris had had only one 60-minute training session with the players. And has had a couple more days and a game in between his first day and now. Things don't get too much easier, though, with a quarter-final matchup coming up here in the Conti Cup. Well, it was a relatively tight affair between these two earlier on in the campaign. Aston Villa ran out the winners just before Christmas, thanks to the goal from Adriana Leon. Brighton with just the one shot on target in that game. That has to be the target here tonight to change that statistic. The Conti Cup quarter-finals are underway. Just one place in the semi-finals up for grabs. And then it could be the big guns. With the likes of Arsenal, Chelsea and Manchester City all lurking for, uh, for the potential winner of this game here this evening. Headed away at the back by Maria torres -Dotter who won this competition back in 2020 with Chelsea. Now off goes Leon, scored in this fixture earlier on in the campaign. Canadian international looking to weave some magic and working it back this time towards Mailing. As Aston Villa look to settle here, they've certainly had their problems with injury of late, especially at the back. And more recently, also in midfield. Staniforth, the latest to join the list of injuries for Aston Villa. Lucy Parker and Dan Turner also out. Does give an opportunity for others though here. Chance to bring the ball back here for Turland, who's had a sparkling goal-scoring season for Brighton. 
she controlled it well. Brighton will look to build a pass, passage of play here. And they've worked it nicely through midfield. Providing the support here on the left-hand side is Sarri. Trying to send the cross in. And he succeeds in finding and Domsala. And the goalkeeper is easily able to gather that one in. Well, at the start of the campaign, Aston Villa certainly had their problems at the back. It looked as though all of those problems had disappeared. That was until the weekend's game against Bristol City when they drew 2-2 with the team at the bottom of the table. A couple of lapses at the back allowed Bristol City twice back into the game. Aston Villa had led twice in that game. Sophie Bagley in goal here for Brighton this evening. And uh, just waiting for the Aston Villa press, which takes a while to arrive. Chujetti's touch and a nice spin by Vicky Lasada, another who has won this competition twice. Captains this Brighton team here this evening. And Brighton deliver, and Van Domsela has to make sure. Pushing that one over the top of her crossbar. Well, clearly the tactic from Brighton here against Aston Villa will be to try and get balls into the penalty area as often as they can. We've already seen two crosses within the opening three minutes. And here's the Brighton corner. And Domsala being tested again, and she spilled it. But she gets a helping hand here from Kenza Dali, who is back there to tidy up. She's given the ball away, though. And here is Lasada. Tatiana Pinto, the only change to the Brighton lineup here this evening. And there she is, poking the ball back for Emma Kuhlberg, who is the furthest back in defence for Brighton and she's given the ball away to Hansen who tries her luck here bounce gave Sophie Bagley plenty of time no real test Well, again, the problem for Brighton at the weekend against Manchester United was getting the shots in on goal. Only had two shots on target in the game against Manchester United. And whilst they do have a prolific striker in Elizabeth Turland, it's just creating high-quality opportunities that seems to be the issue. And if you dig into the expected goal statistics, which some people like and some people don't, but uh, if you do take a look into those in the Barclays Women's Super League, what you do see is that Brighton don't create enough high-quality opportunities. Only Bristol City have a lower expected goals tally than Brighton in the Barclays Women's Super League. And again, they fail to connect with Turland, and Aston Villa can bring the ball away. Domsela's pass, nearly straight out of play. And Brighton not hanging around here. Bergsfund is brought into play. She shifts it wide to Kohlberg. And now Lasada. Torres Dotter. And 
Masada sat at the base of the Brighton midfield. Was the target of an Aston Villa trap there. Was quickly surrounded by both McGill and Hanson, but she evades the trap. And Brighton finds some space on the right-hand side here. Turlan pulling wide, shifting the pass on, on towards Robinson, who was looking to return the favour. Uh, wasn't quite able to do that. Nice turn by Zajotti. And got herself into a really good position, though, was unable to send the pass through. Aston Villa playing with just the one player forward here, as they often do. And Rachel Daly here after her suspension, and Ebony Salmon will lead the line. And Rachel Daly's suspension was one that wasn't really picked up on during the game. Happened in the 30, 39th minute. Uh, she's going to be missing for the next three games, including this one. And so Ebony Salmon will play an attack. What that does mean is that Aston Villa often have five in the field, so plenty of bodies in there. Torres Dotter. Big signing for Brighton, Torres Dotter. Went for the high-risk crossfield pass, unable to pick out a teammate. And it's gathered up here by a really exciting prospect for Brighton, Katie Robinson on the right-hand side, England international. Brighton didn't really get Katie Robinson into the game in the game against Manchester United at the weekend. Need to try and find her in more advanced positions, but this time they've gone in the opposite direction, out towards the left, and Sari will look to test Sarah Mailing. She stands up to that test and deflects the cross away. Carly's challenge with Pattinson. And she gets enough on that one to win it back for Aston Villa. And it's cleared up into the stands. Pattinson's touch gets it back from the throw-in. Well, referee. Lauren Impey tried to play the advantage here. And Adriana Leon. Going to have to be careful because referees have been trying to clamp down on dissent this season. And standing in front of the ball won't help either. Both Sari and Lasada over this one. Well, it's fair to say that Brighton sense there is an opportunity to score here. Plenty sent forward, the ball to the edge of the 18-yard box, smashed away. Well dealt with by Aston Villa. So far, the game looks like an even match. Not too much between Brighton and Aston Villa. Kuhlberg is waiting. The pressure is on here for Maz Pacheco, who was sent off in this fixture earlier on this season. Late red card for her. Flag goes up. And Turlan hits the back of the net, but it won't stand. Quick reaction from the official. Well, credit really has to go to the Aston Villa defence, who uh, stepped up just in time. Plenty of experience back there, of course, with Anna Patton and Rachel Corsi. Marshalling things back there for Aston Villa. Brilliant. 
Patton drops the shoulder, gets away from Sarri. And makes the move through the middle, looking for Ebony Salmon. Two very good strikers on the pitch here in Ebony Salmon and Elizabeth Turlan. Neither really getting too much in the way of service in the 12 minutes of the game so far. Tatiana Pinto swivels. Looks for Pattinson, who uh, had a difficult ride up against Manchester United's Jace at the weekends. Nicely worked to Jordan Nobbs. Scored a hat trick in this fixture last season in the 6 2 win for Aston Villa. Nice spell with the ball here for the away side, and Kirsty Hansen tries to make her way beyond Kulberg. Can't do that. And it's turned away by Bergsfeld at the back. As much as Brighton have had their problems going forward this season, Aston Villa certainly have been a shadow of the team that we saw in the previous campaign. Scoring goals for fun last season, and the big problem has been the disappearance of goals and providing them as well for Hansen, Darley, Lehman and Nobbs. Here comes Darley, trying to force her way through the traffic. And Brighton coping with the threat. Robinson there, gives a helping hand to Kuhlberg. And it's Cooley passed away. Well, it looked as though it was about to be. Brighton do put the ball into touch. Darley delivers, seized into the back of the area. Leon was lurking. But uh, it was well perceived by Pattinson. And she's able to make the clearance. Well timed header away. Flipped on by Pinto. Opens up some space here, and Brighton will look to attack. And Kohlberg is going to try her luck. And the effort is straight down the throats of Van Domsela, who makes the easy catch. It's a really interesting battle here on this uh, closest of touchlines on your picture between Mailing and Sarri. Mailing always looking to creep forward, but I don't think she's going to get too much of a chance to do that here with Sarri very much on her toes, but this time she does manage to get away. And the long ball forward has created some problems here for Brighton at the back. Forward comes McGill, lovely pass from her, Leon is in, she delivers the cross and it falls to the edge of the area where luckily for Brighton, Pinto is there waiting. Both teams are claiming it. It's gone Brighton's way.
Knighton looking for the free kick. Leon able to drive. Well one back by Lasada. I think just about everybody was shocked about Mal Phillips being sacked as the coach of Brighton and Mikey Harris stepping in. There's a brilliant article on the BBC from Emma Sanders discussing the reasons why. Brighton have invested in plenty of experts who analyse performance data and statistics. There's the new training facility, which cost in the region of £8 million. It's worth to read that if you uh, haven't seen it already. The expectations perhaps higher than Brighton's position in the league, which is now 11th in the Barclays Women's Super League. There is an opportunity, though, in this competition to push on and end the season with a smile. Neither Brighton or Aston Villa have any reason not to throw everything at this game. There is a big chance of silverware. Turland on the turn, trying to poke it through. Robinson was there, but she's well looked after by Maz Pacheco, who manages to get back and recover. Foul just outside of Aston Villa's penalty area. You can see the challenge again here. And over eagerness by Kulberg to get to the ball. And Maz Pacheco is back up onto her feet here, but she doesn't exactly look comfortable. Free kick, heads in the direction of Sarri, she misjudged the header and Aston Villa will get the throw in. Sarri turning and is forced back here by the press of the Aston Villa midfield. Has been nothing to testing for either goalkeeper in this game so far. the team willing to give too much away in the opening stages that may well change as we head towards the 90 if we go beyond that if we're level at the 90 extra time is coming up and then it could be penalties well, that's a lovely touch around the corner it goes from Sarri had the support of Pattinson unable to find a ball into the area Jotty with a thumping challenge. Clever touch, Vicky Lasada. Classy play here. Robinson is away. And there are plenty up in the area, including Turlands. And Van Domselaar in the end is able to grab control. And that's exactly what Aston Villa needed back there. There were plenty of blue and white shirts forward here. Not the best of deliveries from Robinson, but it did drop here to Turlands. Aston Villa defence and goalkeeper doing just about enough to grab hold. 
And Van Domsela going down under the challenge here will receive some treatment from the physio team from Aston Villa. Well, there are plenty of other games for you to enjoy tonight on FA Player. Chelsea have their game against Sunderland, which also kicked off at the same time as this one. We've got that one for you to watch. And kicking off in eight minutes' time, big game for Tottenham Hotspur. In what has been a very good season for them, they face Manchester City. Well, the new coach, Mikey Harris, hasn't exactly had that much time to impart his ideas on the team. Gets an extra 30 seconds or so there. Aston Villa also came across towards Carl Awards. And the good news is that the injury list for now doesn't grow because it's uh, looking pretty hefty for Aston Villa. And Domsela ready to go again. not taking any risks, they're happy to go all the way back. Here's Leon, with a chance to run at the Brighton defence. Lovely feet from the Canadian international. Delivers in, Ebony Salmon is there. Deflection off of her though, and out for a goal kick. Tenacious play here from Adriana Leon. Just unable to find a teammate in space. Back here with Leon. Testing the Brighton defenders again. And Sarri was able to do enough to put Sarah Mailing off and she was unable to get that. Again Brighton taking the decision to pass away from the back and it's Torres Dotter who finds Pattinson in a bit of space on the left hand side. Referee not happy with the challenge. And it will be a free kick. Masada taking it. And look at the space here. Sarri trying to exploit it. Lifts in an inviting cross as well. And it took two Aston Villa defenders to deal with that ball into the area and it is thumped away well it was just sent into an area by via tricky Sari here lovely cross asking plenty of questions eventually thumped away by Corsi and Robinson won't get to that one it rolls away and out for a goal kick and any danger from Brighton is gone Well, it's a big week as far as cup competitions are concerned for Brighton. Also have the FA Cup game against Wolves coming up on Sunday. Aston Villa went out with the FA Cup earlier on in the campaign, disappointing result. They were knocked out by Everton. And it's hard to put your finger on exactly what's changed for Carl Ward's team 
this time around, but she's spoken a lot about the difficulty of replicating that form. And they were brilliant last year. I think everybody thought in this campaign there was a chance that they might push the top four, but it's been Liverpool and Tottenham Hotspur who uh, have instead been pushing those at that end of the table. Pacheco into Dali. Neatly worked out here towards Mailing. Drop of the shoulder from Dali, buys her some room. Nice pass into Leon. Aston Villa get the corner. There was an opportunity here to hit this on her left, but Dali didn't have the confidence to do that. Tried to play the pass, and Torres Dutta was able to come across and deal with the threat. Kenza Dali sends one to the back of the area and it's well gathered up by Sophie Bagley. And Torres Dotter able to skip the challenge. One stuff here from Aston Villa, trying to set Leon away. Pattinson on the cover, can only clear as far as Mailey. Checo, pass intercepted by Zajotti. Brighton don't have it for too long though. Aston Villa on the charge again, and they have won a corner. And again, Kenza Dali will come forward. Corner is taken short. Aston Villa trying to change the angle of attack. Darley feeds on. They've worked the angle. No trouble this time, though, for Sophie Bagley. Well, we've seen uh, Jordan Nobbs score a fair few spectacular goals. Not this time, though. Leon has a quick look. Good think about the cross. Decides to go backwards instead. Aston Villa, of course, missing such a big player from their forward line in Rachel Daly. So many decent components to her game, her hold-up player, goal scoring, and that doesn't really even cover it. Would have been a big player for them here this evening. Nobbs also looking to be a big game player, plays the pass, was looking for Ebony Salmon, couldn't find a way through, does manage to get to the ball as Brighton were looking to advance. And buzzing around, Darley trying to get something going here with 14 minutes to go until half-time. Darley floated up towards Salmon, very nearly found its way through. Kenza Dali with some urgency about the run. Adriana Leon being well tracked. Mailing though has a chance to dig out the cross. And again, it's well gathered by Sophie Bagley. Brighton goalkeeper got right underneath that just as things started to look dangerous.
Pinto has been forced a long way back here. Good pressure by Aston Villa. Nobbs. The swivel from Ebony Salmon. Finds room for Leon here, and now Dali. Dali's cross looks good. And it's well watched in the middle by Bergsman, who makes the header. This is a good spell for Aston Villa. And they are forced long, though, with the pass. There were three surrounding Jordan Nobbs. It was too high risk to play the pass to her. Dali was trying to shrug the jotty off. She had other ideas. Couldn't force her way through, though. And here is Anna Patton on the right-hand side of Aston Villa's defence. Merlin's touch up towards the halfway line. No opportunity for McGill to get there. And no risks taken by Bagley, who makes the clearance. Kept in play here by Sarri. Looked good in the early stages in more advanced areas of the field, but Brighton haven't really been able to get her in those positions often enough. And that has often been the story across the campaign. The pass back is short, and it's well spotted by the sliding Bagley, who turns away the danger. Just as things started to look slightly problematic here. Hansen's pass has given the ball away in a dangerous area here. Brighton trying to slip it through. Not this time from Pinto, but the effort on goal is a good one. A very good one. And Brighton are ahead. That is superb from Via Tricky Sarri to break the deadlock and make it Brighton 1, Aston Villa 0. Well, it looked as though this attack had broken down here when the pass didn't make it through from Pinto to Turland. But Sarri had other ideas, wound up, caught it ever so well, and the swerve deceiving Van Domsela finds the back of the net. Well, this game definitely needed a spark of something. And the sparks are flying after that strike from Via Tricky Sarri. And now Brighton push forward again. More confidence in their step after the goal. Robinson is the target on the right. She does get there, but she can only pick out Corsi. And the Aston Villa defender passes away to Maz Pacheco. Well, Elizabeth Turland has been the one across the season that Brighton have really looked to for goals. But Via Tricky Sarri has certainly pulled something out of the back here. Well, it definitely would make for uh, an entertaining spectacle if there were two on the field, but the referee only wants the one ball, and so one is removed. And we continue on the right-hand side, Brighton trying to make more progress. And stopped from doing that. Goal kick.
Aston Villa looking to respond, trying to set Salmon away. Nice cover work by Bergsvind. Darley Swivels, so good at that move, opens up the room. Plays the pass into Leon, who has mailing on the overlapping run, takes away some of the Brighton defenders with that move. And there she is waiting, delivers in the cross, it's going to drop for a chance, a big chance as well. And it's one that McGill can't send beyond Bagley, who clutches hold. Well, this could so easily have been the equaliser. In a game of very few chances, a big opportunity. Well, just before the goal, Aston Villa had a really nice passage of possession. And they've showed in creating that chance for McGill that they certainly have capabilities. And most of their best stuff has come on this right-hand side through Leon. McGill feeding it wide mailing is there again again digs out the cross it's a good looking ball as well but it's one that leon can't turn goalwards clearance away has given the ball straight back to aston villa darling offering the movement had made the return run for the return pass mailing unable to pick her out and Aston Villa forced out of play. Five minutes to go until the break here. Did have that short stoppage for the injury to Van Domsela. Shouldn't be too much in the way of added time, though, at the end of this first period. Aston Villa won't get to that one. Hansen was chasing, but the ball evading her, going out of play for a Brighton throw in. Aston Villa have a corner. That's been a good response to conceding that goal. Whipped into the front post, got the best of balls in. And now the chance to break away here for Brighton. Nobbs was back there, managed to make an important touch, but again they come. Turland is leading the charge, she feeds it wide and makes her way into the area. Waiting for the cross, it will come instead to Pattinson. One more pass and they would have brought Sari into play and we know what she can do from outside of the area. Brighton were unable to get the ball to her. And the danger for now is dealt with by Aston Villa. Well, the tempo of the match has changed completely since the goal. Brighton looking to get themselves in again. And it may drop here for an opportunity. And the Brighton players take a long, hard look towards the referee as Pinto is brought down. Nothing doing, though. No whistle from the referee.
Good pressure from Brighton from the front. Aston Villa have to go all the way back. And since they are really thinking about trying to create an opportunity before half-time. And equally, I'm sure the team will be very aware that they don't want to leave themselves too exposed at the back because Brighton look more than capable all of a sudden in and around the penalty area. Neatly worked out to Pacheco. Lofts one forward. He's looking for the quick route beyond the Brighton midfield. Didn't quite work out, not this time. Uh, looking to head through the middle, here come Brighton, Turland is away, Van Domsela has come, hasn't quite managed to get to the ball, a vital block from Patton, and hammer goalwards but wide by Tatiana Pinto. Well, she's been playing right up alongside Elizabeth Turland in attack. Turland did ever so well here to pick up the pieces after Van Domsela missed the chance to get there. But Pinto with the opportunity from a tight angle could only put it wide. It's a Jotty. Slips the pass. And Tatiana Pinto tried to leave it for Terland. Who was already making her run. Those two not quite on the same wavelength this time. Kubo's <laughs> interception. Nice turn by Pinto. Sada. Chopped down by McGill. Free kick Brighton. Comfortably dealt with at the back by Sarah Maley. And here come Aston Villa with perhaps a final push here. Before the half-time whistle, Torres Dotter, though, spotted that one pretty early, made the interception. Lasada now trying a similar route here for Brighton with the long ball. Lasada up against Dali to creative, experienced midfielders. And as Masada pulls away with the ball, works it back, and Brighton are just managing the game here up to the half time whistle. Good recovery by Brighton, who managed to clear away, and that will do. Up into Aston Villa's half, and it's turned out fairly nicely. There's plenty of space here on the left, and that's where the pass is sent out to the goal scorer, Sarri. <laughs> Quick 
Kuhlberg. Has the pace to get away from Hansen. Couldn't slip the pass, though. Beyond Maz Pacheco. Well, this Conti Cup quarter-final match has all of a sudden come to life thanks to a goal fit for any occasion from Via Triki Sari. And it's a goal that means that Brighton are one goal to the good at half-time. Welcome back for the second half of this Conti Cup quarter-final clash. Brighton against Aston Villa. Brighton currently ahead, and it was an absolute banger of a goal from Viatriki Sarri. Brighton have made a change. Tatiana Pinto, who looked really good in the first half, and was sat just in, uh, just in behind Elizabeth Turland, has been replaced here by Maisie Simmons. You have to wonder whether or, that, or whether or not that might be an injury because uh, well, her form on the pitch would suggest that you wouldn't want to remove her, but she has made way. Aston Villa have 45 minutes to get themselves back into this one. Jordan Nobbs, five-time winner in this competition with Arsenal. Has she got the experience that Aston Villa might need to get themselves back into the game? Pacheco does well. Slips the ball towards Dali. Intercepted by another winner in this competition, Lasada. Would have been in one of those winning teams with Jordan Nobbs. Yellow card, which is shown to Simone McGill for the challenge of Vicky Lasada. It's going to be taken by Bergsfans, her and Torres Dotter, rarely troubled by Ebony Salmon in attack in the first half. That's the way Brighton will be looking to keep things. Darley does well in tight spaces. Pacheco onto McGill here. McGill charging away, has Hansen up in support. Dali's pass was a bit short. Has been recovered here by Jordan Nobbs, who is forced all the way home, back into her own half here. I remember when Ebony Salmon burst onto the scene in the Barclays Women's Super League. Hasn't really been able to force her way into this Aston Villa team and make any kind of noticeable impact. Very difficult to do that with Rachel Daly around. Aston Villa have to try and get her into the game. Jordan Nobbs busier in this second half. And now McGill looking for Ebony Salmon. She's away, has a glance, holds up the ball, has to go for goal, didn't have an option, runs into the feet of Bagley. Much better, though, from Aston Villa. Oh, 
opportunity to instantly go for goal, ran away from Ebony Salmon, and the angle was always tight. We saw these nice moments from Aston Villa in the first half where they had really good possession. Came away from that opening 45 with nothing to show for those nice moments. And that's the challenge here. Try and create better opportunities. Kenza Dali was just caught there by Vicky Lasada. It was a nasty one as she followed through. Right on the hip bone by the looks of things. Okay to twist away here from the attentions of Simmons. Now Villa have committed plenty forward and that means there is space in behind which Brighton are looking to exploit here but Pattinson's pass doesn't find Zajotti who had some room. Corbo's turn, gets away from Hansen, who has come off the worst of the two there. Robinson, who can be so dangerous, with a chance here to run at Pacheco. Tries to skip one way, then the other. Brilliant delivery, and that's excellent defending in the middle to deny Sajotti. Deflected away for a corner. Really got behind the strike. But the Aston Villa defence also got behind it too. Here comes the Brighton corner. Delivered very deep. Well, it was there. For Bergsman to head goalward and able to direct it in the direction of Van Domsela. Best she could do is put it wide. It was uh, always difficult with that one coming from such a height from the sky. Nobbs has been robbed of possession. Turland's fed it through. So Jotty was the one she was looking for. He tries the return pass, but Dali is there to intercept. This game is being played right on the edge. Plenty of nearly moments already in this second half. Still Brighton lead thanks to Viatriki Sarri's spectacular effort that came in the first half. As it stands, it's Brighton heading for another semi-final. And not Aston Villa. Both teams reaching the semi-finals of the FA Cup last season. And then it's hard to not think about what might be. Get to the semi-finals, of course, one game away from the final. Look at the other teams who will most likely be there. They're going to have things to think about in the league. There is a big tussle at the top of the table. And elsewhere in the other games going on right now in the... Conti Cup tonight, Chelsea are three goals to the good against Sunderland. And Tottenham Hotspur finding themselves one behind against Manchester City. 42 minutes of that game gone. Kicked off slightly later than this one. Oh, 
Nobbs touching back. And then Aston Villa will look to head forward. Adriana Leon had plenty of good opportunities to get forward in the first half. Aston Villa haven't been able to find her in such positions in the second half so far. Miguel does find Leon. And Aston Villa have committed plenty up into the area. Leon won't get the ball in though, she was looking for the free kick. No interest at all from tonight's referee. Hansen has some space here, delivers in a good looking ball as well. Waiting at the far post, Poppy Pattinson is there to make the clearance. She gets there before Leon can. Inviting ball, nobody there to meet it though. on Dalek. Aston Villa will try on the opposite side, McGill. Darley pulling wide and looking into the space here that has been created. Darley tangles with Pattinson. The challenge, an unfair one. Now, this is a free kick in a very good area for Aston Villa. And there are plenty of players within this team that can hit them from here. Make no mistake, this will be a difficult one for Bagley to judge from here. Centrally positioned. The free kick could easily go either way. Now that wall should be forced back a bit here. And when the wall is pushed back, you'll see there's plenty of room to get this free kick up and down. Brighton players trying their luck. And Lauren Impey, the referee, having none of that. Dali and Leon, the two over this one. Kenza Dali, he's through the wall, Aston Villa react, and Aston Villa score. Ebony Salmon is there to smash in, but the whistle blows and it won't count. Well, there wasn't too much more that Aston Villa could have done from there. Looked as though they'd hit the nail on the head. Assistant on the far side had other ideas. So well, Aston Villa have had the ball in the back of the net, Ebony Salmon there. Doesn't stand. Brighton continue to lead. Aston Villa continue to push for this equalising goal. Here comes McGill. Well, the strike straight at Sophie Bagley.
Here's that free kick again. And the flag went up pretty quickly for offside. Aston Villa have all this experience in their midfield. Darley and Nobbs. Both trying to do everything they can to create space, create opportunities. Aston Villa have definitely shaded this second half. Nice Pacheco into the area. Salmon pokes on. Kenza Dali digs out the cross, deflected away only as far as Hansen. And it doesn't really drop so that she can get any kind of power on the hit. No danger for Sophie Bagley. Well, Aston Villa are getting closer and closer to the prize, but it continues to elude them, this goal. Nobs fires one across the penalty area chested down by Hansen who wants it back here from Pacheco and she gets it too Kirsty Hansen on her travels delivers in a brilliant ball and Patterson does well to get there and turn away from danger now the chance for a break and this is how the game is balanced now. Aston Villa taking it to Brighton, but there is always that danger that they could be hit by a breakaway goal. Work to do for Mayling. She's given the ball away. Turland is the target, has a look up, goes for goal and pulls it wide. Well, she's had a sparkling season in front of goal. And we've seen her do a lot better than this in moments like this. Off target on this occasion. Pattinson looking to make the challenge. Masada scrapping for it. And this will be a scrap now for Brighton all the way through to the final whistle. 28 minutes to go, they are holding on here. Torostota with a clearance that pays off. Robinson's touch. Nicely worked here. Ball just runs away from Kulberg who was making the run. Referee tried to play the advantage. It was a bit slow in coming. It uh, did come eventually, but the referee by then had blown the whistle for the foul on Rachel Corsi. A reminder that if the game finishes level, we are heading into extra time tonight, then penalties. For now, though. Extra time, the penalties won't be needed. It's Brighton heading to the semi-finals. They've had a difficult few weeks. They've had to cope with a lot with Mel Phillips moving on. 
would be a big result that would be hugely celebrated and what a moment for the new coach Mikey Harris Simmons who came on at half time had Hansen right on her shoulder, so uh, decided to go all the way back. Lovely build up here. Salmon is the target. Aston Villa still can't force their way through though. Still pushing and pushing. Lots of lovely football. And still Brighton hold on. Villa will try again. Loads of good movement from Kenza Dali. She's been excellent in this second half. Aston Villa supporters and Carla Ward, no doubt, will be wondering why it took the goal for this team to come to life. And that's the way football goes sometimes. McGill into Hansen. Hansen delivers. And it's hooked away. Brighton continue to not be able to find that outlet in attack. They need somebody who is up there that the ball will stick to. Because every time they try and attack Aston Villa, it's instantly lost. And they're putting themselves under pressure. Darley always looking to get the ball onto a right boot. That's the problem. And the Brighton players knew what was coming. Patterson was in a tight spot, does well, gets the clearance away. Nervous times here, no doubt for fans of Aston Villa and Brighton. Semi-finals are very close. Plenty can change in 23 minutes. Nobbs goes wide to Mailing. She will deliver. She will get the flick on as well. Leon is there. Now Patton. Keeps hold. Darley has found some space. 
has a look, plays the cross, good looking ball, big chance, and there it is, the Aston Villa equaliser. Has been coming, that goal, through most of this second half. It's the perfect delivery in from Dali here. Lifted it beautifully to the far post. And it's well met by Hansen, who powers the header down and powers Aston Villa back into the game. Well, last season, Aston Villa had Lehman pushing away down one flank, Hansen on the other, and they were a joy to watch. This was much more like the old Aston Villa. Dali, who was red hot in the last campaign, with a brilliant ball. Hansen arrives, and it's 1-1, and it's game on. Alicia Lehman has come on, she is on the far side. Things certainly aren't about to get any easier here for the Brighton defence. Confirmation of that change for Aston Villa for you. Darley, the main instigator. Here's Pacheco. Now making the run was Leon, and she was clipped heavily as well, and that will be a yellow card. And will it? It looks as though that was that's what was coming. That's what the Aston Villa players are certainly asking for here. There won't be a yellow card, there will be an Aston Villa free kick. And it will be delivered by Kenza Dali, who provided the assist for the equaliser. Floats one. Brighton who get there, and then it's fired well over the top and wide. No trouble this time. Lehman can't make any headway. Robinson is back there to make the touch, but that's really not where Brighton want her to be seeing the ball. Lehman now, drifting in field. He was looking for Hansen, the goal scorer. Well, the outlook of the game has completely changed. Aston Villa with confidence in their step after the equaliser. Hansen now looking for a teammate in the middle and able to find one picked up by Leon it's interesting I thought Adriana Leon with uh, Ebony Salmon coming off of the field would move into that central position and play as the only striker but it's her and McGill both there and Leon slightly in behind McGill in what looks more like a 4-2-4 formation from Carla Ward's Dali has been a lot more advanced in the second 45 and Aston Villa have looked, looked a lot more effective as a result. It's been Nobbs who's just sat back, providing the shield for the central two.
Well, he did think there had to be a response from Brighton, and here it comes. Parabali and Lee Gumin about to be introduced here. And perhaps Brighton looking to adjust after the changes from Aston Villa. So a change in shape now for Brighton. Lee Min has actually gone across towards the left-hand side. Not the clearance away that Brighton were hoping for. There's the covering run, though. And before Leon can do too much, Bergsfeld is able to clear that one away. You can win. In a tight spot. That was about the best she could do. Steered around the corner by McGill. That was a live broadcast. As always, we apologise for any language that you hear that isn't appropriate, but there's sometimes not too much that we can do about that, but we do apologise. Things starting to, starting to get heated here, and Brighton looking to force their way back ahead. Lee Gunmin has clipped for a kick. There's the ball that's spilled by Van Domsela. Big chance for Brighton here. Smuggled away by the Aston Villa defence just about. Well, after all their hard work, it looked as though Aston Villa were about to give things up, but Lee came in with the strike, and it's well turned away. Thirteen minutes to go, the game's still not decided. As it stands, we are going to extra time in the Conti Cup. So Jotty the target. Well, Brighton all of a sudden have found some fight. Uh, maybe the changes that they've made have made the impact. They feel as though they needed a change in shape. Coach Mikey Harris has responded after an excellent second half from Carla Ward's side. Simmons, that was a good ball, but it was an excellent interception. Carabali's throw. She gets it back. She comes thumping in and she's caught Hansen too. 
Arabali again. Very nearly played it through the channel. Hansen still doesn't look overly comfortable, but Aston Villa continue on with Dali being pursued here by Lasada. Carabale takes it quickly and sets Brighton away. There's been plenty of work over recent minutes for the Aston Villa defenders to contend with. Leon took a tumble, no whistle from the referee. As a jetty squares the pass. Egan wanted it around the corner, had managed to get beyond Alicia Lehman. Pass never arrived, and now with her back to goal, makes the travel back towards the halfway line. Bursfans. Well, in a way, Aston Villa won't mind this. Brighton just moving it side to side, but not really doing any, anything all that incisive with it. Hansen's touch, he was caught, the referee though, waving play on because Aston Villa have space, have room. Here comes McGill. McGill waits, finds support, some arrives in the shape of Pacheco. In order to try and create some space, Aston Villa make the decision to go all the way back. Looking to draw these Brighton players out of shape, out of position. Lovely ball through the middle here. And Leon is charged down by Torres Dotter. Flag was raised in any case, offside against Adriana Leon. Darley shifts it quickly. Leon was looking to spin before she controlled the ball. Now Patton. Clever from Patton. Aston Villa failed to do too much with the ball though. Well, it's hard to pick at the moment. It's hard to decide which way this one will go. Perhaps no surprise to see any other games taking place in this competition tonight. Chelsea are ahead. 3-0 to the good against Sunderland. Uh, Manchester City against Spurs has just started in the second half. Six minutes of that one gone in the second period. Manchester City continue to lead. One goal to nil. Uh, 
And that's the incentive for either Brighton or Aston Villa. Game against one of those big sides and then... Well, it only takes one win and you're in the final. Will there be dramatic scenes here? You wonder what the approach might be in the final stages here. Do you allow the game to continue through to extra time? Do you push for a winner in regular time? The problem for Aston Villa is the bench here tonight because of injuries and because of the suspension to Rachel Daly isn't particularly deep. Good ball into the area, big chance saved by the feet of Bagley. Well, that might just have been their moment. You wonder whether Aston Villa will look back on that chance and wonder what could have been. Nobbs. Finding space where it seems there isn't any, and Mailing arrives, delivers the cross in, but it's too close to Zijotti, and she is uh, able to get that one away. And now here comes the break, and it's Robinson who is racing clear of Pacheco here. Robinson for Brighton is well stopped by the sliding defender, Matt Pacheco, who manages to make the recovery. Katie Robinson might be wondering, should I have hit that a bit earlier? Well, this game was slow to get going since the goal, though. It's been a real contest, something of a blockbuster. Sal was late on well, Robinson. And the yellow is given to Maz Pacheco. Brighton looking for a moment of magic here. Can Simmons be the creator? Simmons into the front post. And Pacheco is there, Lee Gunmin. Simmons. Bit too close to Van Domsela, and Aston Villa's goalkeeper is happy to sump that one away and finds Lehman, who runs into Kuhlberg. Nobbs arriving. McGill's not too far away, but Nobbs is going to take this on her own. Goes for goal, deflected away as far as Lehman. Jordan Nobbs again, this time tries to pass. And neither the shot or the pass proving to be too effective. Well, it has been such a tight affair, it would seem almost cruel for either side to go on and score a winner inside the 90. That's well, football for you, though. McGill waiting. So is Leon. And she doesn't quite connect with the cross. It was a brilliant one into the area, right into her path pace on it maybe made it a bit too difficult Hansen now trying a lot winning a corner deflected away off of Karabali Aston <laughs> Villa looking to create some indecision by taking it quickly Pacheco didn't really have the angle for the cross into the area though and Aston Villa rather waste the chance. Yeah. 
Mailey slips it through. Was perhaps an opening there to go for goal. Patton. Nice delivery, nodded away by Karabali. Now Hansen into Leon. At the front post, Bagley is there to cover and push around that post and out for a corner. There is just one minute of the 90 remaining. Aston Villa looking for the goal to send them through to the semi-finals. Brighton defending with everything they've got. They haven't made the clearance. Maz Pacheco is then denied by a brilliant save from Bagley. Well, if Brighton go on to make it through to the semi-finals, they will have Sophie Bagley to thank. What a save, and I doubt she saw much of this through the crowd either. As Pacheco must have thought that she'd scored. Leon looking for the free kick and she gets it as well. Bang on the 90. Dali floating one in, Karabali is there. And Lee Gunmin will scoot after this one. And it's cleared away. Will come straight back from Aston Villa. Dali. Hansen, who's really come to life in this second half. Now Leon. Pacheco there in support. So is Nobbs. Nobbs trying to thread it through. The pass was well spotted by the Brighton defence. And now Mailing, who has her pass intercepted, and blue and white shirts here will streak forward. And Simmons will play the sensible pass. Robinson floats one in. It will drop to Ligamin. And she's flashed it wise. Well, there probably won't be a better opportunity inside regular time to score the winner. Both Aston Villa and Brighton have had their chances to wrap this game up. And neither side have taken them. To Jotty this time, on to Robinson. Flicked through by Simmons. Fighting really hard to get there. It's extra time unless someone scores. Semi finals of the Conti Cup at stake. Carabali sends one up to the edge of the area. Simmons turning and doing well. She was pulled back, wasn't she? Well, she didn't really seem to appeal. And Lee Min, who had that brilliant chance moments ago, finds the Jotty. Aston Villa did brilliantly. It's Lehman who's there who manages to recover. Was there a pull here? Uh, it looked as though Corsi just pulled out of it.
really frantic in the late moments of this game, but it does look as though we are heading to extra time, and then it will be penalties if things are all square still. Kubo won't get that. Hesitation at the back from Brighton, that's not needed at the moment. Bagley's clearance will be the last touch of the 90. We are heading to extra time. Aston Villa fighting back in this second half. Hanson with the strike, but neither side able to find the winning goal in this Conti Cup quarter-final match. It's been a thriller. We're heading to extra time. Brighton won, Aston Villa won after the end of regular time here. Well, for Aston Villa, there isn't too much else to play for really this season. This is their big shot at Silverware in this Conti Cup. No doubt the words from Carl Ward will be something along the lines of leave it all out there. Brighton still have the FA Cup coming up at the weekend and their match against Wolves. And no doubt there are Wolves fans watching on, enjoying the fact that Brighton are heading into extra time. Away we go then, for the first 15 minutes of additional time in this Conti Cup quarter-final match. Brighton and Aston Villa all square after 90. Has someone got that magic moment in their boots? Asada. Spins into trouble here. Aston Villa on the charge. Scrappy start to this extra time. Pacheco joining the attack, working it wide to Hansen. Tries to get the cross in, wins a corner. Corner is taken short, it's lashed into the area and it's been pushed wide. Two Brighton players and the goalkeeper Bagley jumping at the ball and it's turned away. The Villa players disperse in the middle but it's Brighton who get to the header. And Lee Gumin has done excellently here, racing away with it before Jordan Nobbs can get there. She's all on her own, needs some support. Here it comes, provided by Robinson. Floats one into a good area, but it was too easy in the end for Van Domsela. No doubt that was frustrating for Lee Gumin, who'd done ever so well to bring the ball from a, her own penalty area all the way up to Aston Villa's. Closing down, Lehman making the charge. <laughs> Around the corner from Carabali, lovely ball. Kept in play as well, just about by Brighton, but only just about. And Maisie Simmons gives it straight back to Aston Villa's goalkeeper, Van Domsela.
Villa have gone straight through the middle here. Parabali makes the challenge. Well, Kuba had to race to get there. And as there is tiredness in the legs, and Kuba certainly looks to be blowing out here. It's passes to feet that are needed. And the team that recognises that will probably be the team to advance. Probably all about getting the ball to your substitutes as well. Those with fresher legs. Mailing and Nobbs have both been on from the start. They combine. Lehman on as a substitute, unable to get to the pass. The girls' challenge. Chested down here by Hansen. Well, she saw the opportunity to go for glory. And she sends it way over the top of the crossbar here. given away by Brighton it's Hansen again looking dangerous but the cross is well intercepted Darley it's going to give things another go here for Aston Villa Mailing slips the pass into Leon. no way through for her but she has won the corner Aston Villa into the front post and making the run was Patton deflected away by the Brighton defenders out for another corner here good run by Patton and she was well found another Aston Villa corner and another header away by Brighton Checo's pass, there's the delivery, and there's the clearance. Well, how this time by Bagley. Been by Simmons. Megan Min is offering an outlet on the right hand side, but Brighton just want to try and keep hold of the ball here. So Jotti can't get away from Hansen, and Dali just keeps on running in this game.
racing after it off goes Turland hasn't had too many chances here tonight which is surprising really I think given her goal scoring capabilities Brighton would be trying to give the ball to her anywhere close to the penalty area as often as possible might be harder to do that given the lack of energy that the players will now have having played well over a hundred minutes in this game with the additional time that you have to add Six minutes remain of the first period of extra time here in this Conti Cup tie. It's going to go right to the wire. to say whoever makes it through will thoroughly deserve the chance to play in the semi-finals Simmons is charged down. It looked to be an unfair challenge from here, but the referee allowed play to go on. And Aston Villa are able to break. Lehman is racing, so is Bagley. She sweeps away. Mailing is the quickest to arrive. Darley then there. Hansen chips into the area, can't find a teammate. Liga Min on the edge of her penalty area gives the ball away to Hansen who chips on and caught in two minds. Katie Robinson is back there and nods away for a corner. Darley looking to do some damage from the corner here for Aston Villa. Tried to nod away. It's a real scramble in there, but of course he won't get to that one. Here's Nobbs. Avenue for the return pass was blocked off ever so slightly. No risks at this stage. She's got the experience. She knows. Keep the ball. Work it round. Wait for your chance. Well, it always looked likely that the flag would be raised against Turlands. Nobbs won't get there this time. Turned on by Zajotti. This pass is defeat. Zajotti had to run for it. I have to think these players have had probably close to 110 minutes in their legs after the extra time added at the end of the first and second half. Lehman on the sprint, looking for the perfect pass, it's very nearly an own goal. Bertrand had a body shape all wrong there. And sent that looping up onto the roof of the net, and only just over the bar. A heart-in-mouth moment, no doubt for Brighton fans. Two minutes to go until the end of this first period of extra time. And then we have an extra 15 minutes before the 120. Corner delivered in. And Lee Gunmin should be able to tidy this one up. First of all, the whistle, there was a collision in the middle. And the referee has to stop the game. Physio teams on.
Well, Guru Bergstam will be so relieved that that clearance over the top of the bar just moments ago didn't land up in the back of the net. This is the cross. Could have been very dangerous. Good news for Aston Villa. Anna Patton is back up onto her feet. Aston Villa already have a huge list of injuries within this team that we've spoken about already during this game. Defensively, there have been big issues. Lucy Parker, Dan Cerner, both out of this team. And good news here for Brighton as well as Carabali makes her way to the touchline. And given that she's still holding the side of her head and given the protocol that now exists, maybe she'll have to be removed. Maybe Brighton will just wait until we get to the end of this first period of time. It's going to be even more time added to it now. sure fans of both teams are thinking about the possibility of penalties you wonder whether those thoughts are going through the head of the players or whether they are purely concentrating on the game still some time before we get to penalty kicks Carabali back onto the field for Brighton, who have been rather casual here at the back. Leon trying to steal possession. Well, it looks as though Brighton are pretty happy just to get themselves up to this first break. Well, there we go, the first period of additional time is over here. We have 15 minutes more remaining. And still, the teams are level. Hero status is up for grabs. Aston Villa get us started here for this second period of extra time. Brighton won, Aston Villa won as it stands. It stays like this. Penalty kicks are just 15 minutes away. Pacheco has run into trouble here. And Turlan has sights on goal. Well, she caught it sweetly enough, but the effort straight at Van Domselaar. Had it been either side, could have been a different story, of course. Hansen still has energy to run. And there is space. She delivers. And again, it's cleared away. And again, here comes Dali on the left. What can she provide? Well, she went low, and it was well spotted. Whistle against Simmons, Aston Villa free kick. And Nobbs is asked to travel a further five yards forward to take it. She won't mind that. Shifted wide, Hansen there, low delivery. Corner kick. Yeah. 
Villa corner, glanced away. Here comes Nobbs. Oh, she was looking for McGill, unable to find her. Sliding challenge, doesn't come to too much, and Aston Villa break away with the ball. Darley looking for room, and finding some as well. Pacheco joining the attack on the left, Hanson can't find her. Oh, that was a late challenge, surely on Hanson. Simmons gets away with that. Stumped forward, Aston Villa not hanging around now. Just 12 minutes remain. Also has some holding, the Brighton bench certainly seemed to think so. Turlin not given a chance to get away from Corsi. And the whistle is blown. Too many openings now. They have to take advantage of every single opportunity. Tired minds, tired legs on the field. Brighton launching one straight down the middle. Never really created the angle with the ball and. Aston Villa make light work of that at the back. Hansen can't connect with the pass. Skillful from Carabali, buy some room. Legal Min unable to get away from the challenge of Patton from behind. And it's these passes into feet that are proving to be effective for Aston Villa. I imagine there's not a single player other than Kirsty Hansen that wants to keep on running in this game, but she has bags of energy. Off she goes, plays the pass. That was rolled in towards McGill. She was unable to turn it goalwards. Wide it goes. Never really looked likely to test Bagley from there. Robinson nearly ran into Pacheco. That could have been dangerous at the other end. Turlands can't get there ahead of Patton. Well, you wouldn't want to be the player now that messed up, the one to make the mistake. All about playing the percentages at this stage. Robinson, well, it was risky, but it's worked out here. It was Really good opportunity. Brighton had players forward, but Simmons unable to find them. And here is Hansen looking for Pacheco. She in turn crosses into the area. Well, it was a glorious ball in. Adriana Leon unable to hit the target though. 
Well, you saw the reaction there of uh, Alicia Lehman, who was at the back of the penalty area, and that told a story. That was a very good chance for Adriana Leon. Carabali can't flick on. Aston Villa charge again. Lehman's touch is heavy. Gave the opportunity for Torres Dotter to come across. Simmons. Oh, using the width of the pitch. That didn't exactly look nice for Robinson. Simple balls that Brighton need, and they need to clock onto that here. It's not going to be anybody tracking you with any kind of pace. Kuberg made to run the length of the field there, and the pass never made it. Van Dom Salah comes out, gathers up, easy. I would imagine the goalkeepers have got uh, plenty of energy still in their legs. Hansen, ball into the front post, turned away. Big chance, Leon, who drops the shoulder. Well, she does ever so well, but she runs into the excellent Maria Torres Dotter. Well, when she moved away here from the defenders with such skill, you thought this was the moment, the magic moment. Excellent, though, from Torres Dotter. Deep to the back of the area is where it's sent. And this is where Aston Villa are looking to keep it. With just five minutes of this game to go. Mailing. Brilliant ball. And as Pacheco delivers one in, looking for the flick on but not finding it. Darley. Doesn't bring the ball under control. Brighton managed to get away just about. It's about as tense as it gets here. Lehman beat one, beat two. It drops for Dali. She goes for goal but sees the effort blocked. Aston Villa are happy to continue. Leon still looks so fresh. Hansen arriving, another corner for Aston Villa. Well, I'm a neutral, and it's nervous for me here, so if you're a fan of either of these two teams, I can only imagine. A few more Aston Villa bodies up inside the penalty area waiting for this one. into the final three minutes here. Aston Villa pushing for the winner to send them through to the semi-finals. Nodded away, Darley there slams it wide.
Well, I imagine Aston Villa fans were happy to see it drop to her, but she couldn't send it in the direction of Bagley. Penalties coming up, who do you fancy? Carabali can't get beyond Mailey. Can someone snatch it here in the final two minutes? Brighton find room, but they can't get beyond the claret and blue wall at the back. Late change for Aston Villa. And onto the field, Mullet replacing McGill. Well, often you see managers make changes so that players can come on purely to take penalties. And I always think that's slightly cruel. When you're not up to the rhythm of the game and you've barely kicked the ball. Surely that won't be the situation for Georgia Mullet, who's just come on. Into the final minute of extra time here. Penalties are on the horizon unless something dramatic happens in the next 45 seconds. Lee Goodman with the chance. Never really gets behind that one. And it dribbles through and you have to be better than that to beat Van Domsela. Malik racing, and so too is Leon. Adriana Leon, still probing, still pushing, still trying to find a way here for Aston Villa. Sumped away. It was a heavy leg from Robinson, but she did manage to make the clearance. Well, this is it. We are on the 120. Bang on. Patton's pass, Lehman there. Swiss International delivers in, but it's cleared. The nerves are jangling here. Adriana Leon finding Hansen, and Hansen's heavy touch gives Brighton a chance to clear. Pacheco. Maybe the final opportunity to send in. Cleared away only as far as Hansen. Hansen's touch. And the challenge was late from Leon. A slip by Bagley, but it won't make an inch of difference. We are heading for penalties in this Conti Cup quarter-final clash. It finishes Brighton 1, Aston Villa 1, after extra time. And that means it's penalties to decide who makes the semis. These opportunities in careers to go the distance in competitions rarely present themselves.
The two sixes, Corsi and Lasada, have made the decisions. Now let the games begin. Brighton will go first, and Lasada, the captain, takes the choice to take the first spot kick. Sada sees the effort saved. Aston Villa off to the best of starts. Van Domsela stretching, gets right down to the corner to push away. Aston Villa have the edge as Sarah Mayling steps up to see if she can follow in the footsteps of her goalkeeper. And there's the first gamesmanship that we will see. Bagley leaving Mailing to collect that one herself. Made some brilliant stops in the game to keep the scoreline level. And she's there to make another super save. Well, it's the two goalkeepers lighting things up so far. Brilliant big hands from Sophie Bagley. Mika Min, looking to be the first one to score with this third penalty kick. Well, it's another miss. Unbelievably, nobody has scored yet. Liga Min off target. And perhaps after all of that extra time, all of the additional minutes, the legs are heavy, it's more difficult for these outfield players. Adriana Leon, the latest one to make her way forward. Takes the time. How about this for theatre from Adriana Leon? Leon is the first to score. Clinical from the Canadian who gives Aston Villa. The advantage in this round of penalties. Elizabeth Turland's turn. And Turnand sees the effort saved. 
Brighton just can't get past Van Domsela. There was some real pace behind it. There's some stop. Three penalties, three that haven't gone in for Brighton. Rachel Corsi. For Aston Villa. And it's another save, would you believe it? This time from Bagley. Well, that is a big, big moment here for Brighton. Two goalkeepers continue to shine in these penalty kicks. Zajotti looking to put just something on the board here for Brighton. <laughs> Needs to score. And it's saved again by the excellent Van Domsela. Unbelievable stuff from Aston Villa's goalkeeper. Well, this is it. If Aston Villa score this, then they are through to the semi finals of the Conti Cup. They've done it, they're there. Aston Villa heading to the semi-finals of this season's Conti Cup. The final penalty dispatched into the corner, but these penalties belong to their goalkeeper. Van Domselaar is the hero with three big saves and Aston Villa in what has been a difficult season, make it through to the semi-finals, into the final four. They are now only one game away from the final. Well, it's heartbreak for Brighton, who pushed and pushed in this game and were ahead after that fabulous stri strike from Sarri. But the comeback and the goal from Hansen took us to penalties. And on penalties, Aston Villa winning 2-0 and making their way through to the semi-finals of the Conti Cup. Thanks for joining us.